Okay, so uh, well, there's some newcomers today, but I, I apologize first that this may not be completely self-contained. Uh, I will try to make it as self-contained as possible. So the setup yesterday is that the, the first day we talked about uh, Abelian schemes, and uh, the yesterday we consider uh, we started consider the cases with singular fibers. So these are so we consider the degeneration of the Jacobian variety that comes from a degeneration of curves where you allow the singular curves to be at worst um, so that they should be con integral with at worst plano singularity. Um, so, it, but in this geom geometric setting, uh, there are uh, so. The, the purpose we do is to, we want to do some sort of abelianization. So we want to use the structures for this chloride to study the structures for the singular fibers of the total space. Uh, but the, the two things we, we, we have the extension, one is in, they're in completely different categories. One is two kinds of extensions, uh, two types of extensions. So, so the first one is the so it's, it's by Ngo, but actually Felix and Bernstein, Deling and Gaber and Ngo, who uh, tells us that that when you feel in singular fibers, that the decomposition theorem no longer this local system, but they will uh, be semi-simple perverse sheaves. And Ngo further told us that what the perverse sheaves are, they are just intermediate extensions of the local system of the smooth locus. In other words, the decomposition theorem uh, has full support. So this is the, the, the first extension on the level of the decomposition theorem, and uh, which concerns con uh, constructible categories. So the other one is due to our ranking. So uh, from the, the, the perspective of first day in view of the Beauville decomposition, um, then the decomposition theorem is in some sense compatible with the, the structure given by the Fourier transform and ranking. Uh, it extends the Poincare line bundle to some called Macaulay sheaf <coughs> over, um, so from, from the smooth locus to, to, uh, uh, to the relative product, which induces derived equivalences. So this is, a, this is the Poincare sheaf. So again, the, the first thing I would explain today is that the complexity of these two things. So you have two types of complexity. One comes from the, the when you do decomposition theorem, you have to involve intermediate extensions of the local system. The other is that in the, this, is, this, con this concerns some coherent sheaf. You have an extension of the Poincare line bundle to some Carl Macaulay sheaf. And the, the complexity of these two sides actually are matched. So this is the, so this is the, the, the first theorem I want to explain, which was part A of the theorem I stated last time. Uh, well, this is uh, it's it's already stated. So there exists a a, a decomposition of the relative diagonal into uh, algebraic cycles, which are um, orthogonal projectors. By this, I mean if you consider convolution of two cycles, this is uh, either zero or I if I and J are the same. So these are just, you have a decomposition of the diagonal which realizing, inducing universally the, the decomposition field. <coughs> and further, as I explained yesterday, these every purpose is every perverse sheaf here actually is a, up to, from the theorem of Ngo, every summit here um, comes from the intermediate extension of something, uh, of the local systems. So I think Charles. Are we out of charts? <laughs> yeah, there are some colored ones. Oh yeah, okay, thanks. Okay, so in, in other words, this is this is this confirms the, the conjecture of uh, Cody Hanamura in the case for 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 this compatible by Jacobian fibration, which extends the Beauville, the theorem of Beauville, the Moore uh, over the smooth locus. 
Um, but in other words, so so well, uh, the the connection between the theorem and the, the description here is that is every pi i is it would be expressed in terms of the ranking sheet. Um, okay, so let's give the proof first. So there are a few a few steps that every step actually uses a different. The way we're thinking about this theorem is that you know, so the decomposition theorem is motivic. So so it, that, I mean you you. This, uh, so you, you can really have a, the so the, the relative motive of this uh, this one actually be decomposing the submotives which realize the decomposition theorem. Um, okay, so 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 the proof there are several steps. That's, let me start with the step one, which so the step one uses the derived equivalence, which is this is parallel to what happened in the, when there are uh, uh, smooth fibers. So since this p induces a derived equivalence, uh, so this is the, uh, this is parallel to the case of abelian schemes. So so this p induces a derived equivalence, meaning that if we compose the p with the inverse of p, it induces uh, the fourier mukai transform, just given by the structure shape of the the relative diagonal. So this is just a, um, which is id. Okay, then, so this is identity uh, concerning four Mukai kernels, so we get to send just things to uh, to cycles, and we just pick the, the, if you pick the correct degree, then, so this side will just pick up the uh, the diagonal cycle. Oh, what happened? Okay, I, I could be louder if, <laughs> yeah. So the one side just picks up the diagonal cycle and the, then the expression will give you a, a bunch of, uh, from zero to two G. And uh, this, the, that these are then the quadratic terms in terms of the, the, the cycles given by the Fourier transform. So um, the two G minus I inverse composed with F I. So you have two, two G plus one possibility. Okay, this is this almost comes for free uh, from the derived equivalence. Um, however, as I said, once you writing, once you can write down the, the uh, decomposition of diagonal, this is not this does not tell you anything uh, interesting because this like you need if you want to make use of it, you need to, for example, to get decomposition, you need to uh, guarantee the uh, orthogonality of this these cycles and. Uh, uh, this is the actually one of the very subtle steps. Let me just illustrate ideas. Step two. Step two, which is which concerns um, pathological relations. So as we, uh, from the relation perspective, as I explained last time, that in order in the abelian scheme case, in order to make that this kind of decomposition of diagonal work, uh, one has to prove a bunch of quadratic relations. And uh, so they are of the, the, the form. Um, so let me just write down the statement, of, which is for vanishing, uh, which are, if you consider F, Fj, um, Convolution with uh, f i inverse, this is just zero, but the four vanishing is happening in the range when i plus j is uh, smaller than the two g. Uh, to make the comparison with what's happening yesterday, is, is this color okay for everyone? Uh, okay, the strong four vanishing for abelian scheme. So when the, when there are no singular fibers, then the total, from the tautological relation perspective, it's f i inverse f j is just zero when i is when i plus j is not equal to two g. So this is the the, the main difference between um, so these are the i and the j, and uh, so when there are with abelian scheme, you have zero here and a zero here, but now you, this zero becomes something messy. But the, luckily, we are able to uh, contain all the mass in just in, in this upper triangular part. Okay, proof. So the proof actually involves a lot of steps. 
Let me sketch the uh, proof of, of uh, for a vanishing. Let me explain the idea. So if we uh, look at uh, the proof of the and go support theorem, actually one of the key step is to, uh, so it's called the delta regularity. For example, this also uh, appeared in, in the work of Goethe, uh, Van Tucky, Goethe, and Van Straten in, study, in the study of compatible Jacobians. Uh, so this is, this roughly says that if, if so for if the, the singularities, so the delta stratum concerning the, um, the family, uh, the co-dimension of the delta stratum cannot be um, uh, too small. So, so here the delta means, for, for a curve, the delta means the difference between the arithmetic genus and the geometric genus. So, so in particular, this delta regularity is a key input in, also in, in, go, in running the goal support theorem, which says that, for example, the delta one stratum has co-dimension at least one, delta two stratum has co-dimension at least two. And so on, because if, if otherwise, then the, the, it breaks the smoothness of total space. So the delta regularity will give you, will control you um, something concerning the arranging sheaf, which is of the following form. So you have this p, which is a which is a coherent sheaf, and you can take as n's tensor. So I put some n here to to remind you the I mean the connection to the multiplication by n. So uh, and the, so you have a, the, the sheaf, and you can compose this with F, the p inverse. By this, I mean you first pull back p from the one, uh, two three factor, pull back p inverse and the one two factor, and then push forward to the one three factor. So this is just the convolution means. Okay, you, you take this, and uh, so this gives you a, a sheaf on uh, on the relative product, and the, so so this will the careful study of. Uh, this sheaf will tell you that the support has whole dimension at least G, or G is the arithmetic genus. To, 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 um, to convince you what, what's the meaning of that. So what is this? So this, if, if, you, if you restrict you to the smooth locus over smooth locus, so this is nothing but the graph, if the, if the structure sheaf of the graph uh, a structure shift of, of the graph of multiplication by n. So you, for the abelian scheme, you have a you have a graph of multiplication by n, and the, then this thing is nothing but just the it just supported uh, uh, yeah it's just supported here and the. Oh, this, uh, it may not be a something, maybe something else supported on the, the graph of the multiplication by n. So if you look at the dimension of this locus, then it's, you know, it's it's it has co-dimension g. But the upshot is that uh, where you have singular fibers, where you have this complicated p, although you, in general you cannot really write down what this p looks like at the boundary. It's just uh, some very abstract Macaulay sheaf, but uh, uh, but you you have the same co-dimension bound, meaning that although the boundary is a co-dimension two, but uh, this one you still can control it. Okay, so this the support property uh, will, uh, so the, this support property where you can, you can do this for any n will give you a bunch of tautological relations. So, so the rough idea is that if you have some sheaf which has support uh, very small, then the first of Chen character will just vanish. But of course, there is technical issue because P is not perfect. So then P tensor N is not the bounded, but it still it makes sense to talk about the support of an unbounded complex. So, so there is a uh, technical reduction, which finally you can still, you, can, you need to argue that you still can use this support information to, to produce tautological relation. But as long as you can produce tautological relation, you can imagine that you get some quadratic relation of this, this kind. So, so you get the tautological relation of the form uh, where every term is of the, for, for different ij, but the coefficient here would be dependent, the coefficient here would be dependent on n. Okay, so you get, it's not very hard to convince that you get things like that. 
And uh, then by studying these coefficients, so they are random enough, so this forces you to have. This is similar to the idea for the Abelian scheme. So the, as long as you can, you can play this game for any n uh, greater or equal to one, then, then you have many, many relations. But, but then using linear algebra, you can, this can force you to have the, the vanishing for the individual term. I'm omitting many details here, but uh, I hope to illustrate the idea. So, so really, that the, here, the, the, the way for producing relations is a, is a dimension uh, is a dimension estimate, and this explains why you only have uh, vanishing at the one side of uh, this line. These are zero in some sense for dimensional reasons, but for other side, these are small cycles that we cannot control. Okay, so this is the, the, the step one, is you just write down the cycles, and we have some relations between them, which um, which comes from a careful study of uh, the pathological relations. But now, um, oh, yeah. Uh, you mean here, yeah, this one? Oh, this is just induced by the Fermi inverse. Yes, this 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 is uh, so yeah. I, I almost some technical details. So so here, f is more or less chain of p, and f inverse is the chain of p inverse with a bunch of top uh, contribution because of the single fibers. You have to consider all of them. But even if you write this way, it's not so correct because the P, as I said, is not a, uh, it's a, not a perfect complex. It's not finally bonded. So, so then the, the, the correct way is to just read, instead of writing using Chen, you, you write the, the, the tall class uh, of uh, both um, photon McPherson, which, construct, which is constructed using the localized the Chen classes. And then uh, what you have, also then you have some top correction here. But, but if, you, if, if this P is, uh, Locally free, then you can. So the, the, the formula really is just chain p. Yeah. So this is this is f. This is f inverse, and the, these are the degree i, degree j parts, respectively. Sorry. Yeah. The p inverse is so the the p is a Kalman Cauchy shift. It's going thing, so you can take the dual. Uh, but uh, but so it's more or less the dual up to uh, the some light du relative dualizing shift with the second family. So. At least the, so for example, the Arinkin theorem tells you that the P composed with P inverse is just the, the, the structure sheaf of the diagonal. But this is exactly the equivalent statement, but here you have to control this way. You, you have to insert any N and, and, and then play the support game. I think what might be hard to understand is that the inverse does not mean that it's inverse transformation. It's a different transformation from the inverse line. Yeah. So you stop this. Oh, it's not like I'm on the sheaf. Yeah, but but you, you do everything at the sheaf level, and finally the, the cycles are just obtained from them. Otherwise, otherwise these things are yeah. It's, uh, the, the, the the relations is easy to obtain. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the comments. Okay. So now uh, we lose half of the vanishing. that start by uh, this uh, red the red the red star. So the step three is that we still, this, so, so the option is, so, so you can think of the original relation, this one and this one as some orthogonality, but this half of them are uh, semi-orthogonality. So, but the, but the upshot is that they are already enough to give you projections, the right projections. Let me explain this. So, so in other words, the semi orthogonality analogy is the, 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 uh, the least thing we, we need to, to get motivic decomposition, to construct these motifs. So in other words, we, the, this pi i would, so these, so in the Abelian scheme case, this pi i are nothing but these quadratic terms uh, like uh, f, sorry, I just erased it. Oh, yeah. So these are just pi i in the Abelian scheme case, but in, when there are singular fibers, this is not true because you don't have the orthogonality. Completely, but you have to. Uh, uh, so so okay. So let me explain this part. It's a it's a trick. So the PK. 
So let's take the, the filtration perspective. So the PK is the, we just collect all these terms, quadratic terms bounded by K. Uh, I'll explain why I do this. So this is P uh, F I F two uh, G minus I inverse. Okay, so, so geometrically you should think of this as a, uh, as a motivic realization of the, the truncation function. Um, you should secretly think of this as a truncation functor, uh, but it's realized as a, a quadratic um, relation. Um, okay, so but then what the the for, the for, the this half of the tautological relation buys us the Fourier vanishing buys us that if you truncate at the p uh, at the place k. And then you, you truncate as some place larger, so L is greater than K. Then you know if you just write down the four terms and uh, consider the thing in the middle, this is is the same as PK. So this is just the formal consequence of the four vanishing. Uh, you just write down the this is this is this is not that surprising. This is uh, natural from the truncation perspective, right? So you, this this means you truncate the K, and here you truncate the K first, and then truncate the bigger place. Nothing happened. However, so the problematic part is that if you, well, if it's really a truncation function, then if you first truncate at the bigger place and then you, you truncate at the smaller place, so you want this still to be this uh, pk where l is greater than k. But this is not known because we lose actually half of the tautological relations. So this is, this is not known. We don't have this. Um, but there was a, there's a there's a fix for this because. As I said, the, the crucial thing is that we uh, we contain this all this mass in just half of them. So you, I mean, since it's an upper triangular uh, matrix, then you can expect that using some tricks, you can. Uh, so so ideally, we want something to be diagonal, di diagonal. But but we we already got an upper triangular thing, too, so it's not so surprising that we were able to diagonalize it. So so the trick we put is we we, uh, we adjust the projector P K. See, the thing we worried about it is, is when this k is smaller than l. So we just we start with the original perverse truncation functor, but we add, we increase it. We take the composition of the sequence, starting you first cut things using p two g and p two g minus one and so on until p k. Then. This by using this modified uh, projectors, and then we can just construct the pi k to be uh, this modified projector minus p k minus one. Comparing to it's it's a it's a huge equation, but uh, the idea is some, somewhat this simple. Okay. So so that it's. Uh, we we'll, we'll check the exercise that the, the four really tells you that these are okay. So now we have to construct the boundary cycle, the comparative diagonal, um, and uh, they satisfy the desired relations. So the last step is to check a uh, homological realization. So you have to. So these quadratic terms uh, really uh, does the correct work. Um, so, so to here this is this is actually uh, it's a, this step will be used. Uh, so this step will use as an inverse support. Um, so, 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 okay. So, so the idea. So we want to show that. Want to show. I mean, yeah. 
So this answers uh, Yonghong's question yesterday, but uh, okay, I, 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 we, want, we want to, so everything till step three does not use tango support, the last step we'll use. We want to show, uh, uh, so the PK act as the truncation functor on the, the, the decomposition theorem. Um, okay, so in other words, you have the cohomological correspondence, you have PK which acts on F Q, F Q bar, and this maps to, let's give a name, a star, this maps to, so this is just, you take the image of PK, which of course maps to the F star of Q bar, and it suffice to, to show, so you know what you want to show this is exactly the truncation functor. By other words, in other words, this means that you want to show that if you take the perverse cohomology of this star, so this is an isomorphism. This is zero if uh, i is greater than k, because you know this is you want this to be really the truncation at the place k. So when when i is greater than the place you want to truncate, it should get zero. And that you should get iso if i is small or equal to k. So this is, in other words, you turn a statement into uh, something which concerns a, a, a morphism between perverse sheaves. Oh, so because because this is a this is a morphism between complexes. After taking h i, it becomes a morphism. So this is a this is a morphism between semi-simple perverse sheaves so so for so for statement concerning the morphism between semi-simple perverse sheaves there it's a it's the the support theorem of ngo is a, is a very powerful tool because you know what, whatever happens for this this morphism between semi-simple perverse sheaves but ngo since ngo tells us that these are uh, so this is of full support so 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 this means that uh, either it's zero or an ISO and can be just detected over any uh, Sarisky open subset of the base, and then then you can just get rid of all the singular fibers, and then the discussion the day one already tells us that. So, so then, uh, since Ngo tells us that, so the, so the, uh, so these semi-simple perverse sheaves we consider are of full support. So then it, it suffice to, so only need to, can, can prove, so only need to prove this, uh, the statement or need to to prove this um, um, over any Sarisky open U over the base. So which this this part concerns only single uh, smooth fibers. This is smooth locus. Uh, so that uh, the proof this over that this is given by by uh, day one discussion. Um, okay, but so the, the caveat is that, this, so it seems that the support theorem already tells us that you can spread out the statement we know from um, abelian part to the singular fiber, but this only happens in the step four because, it, so, uh, because the, the, before you can do that, first you need to show that this PK are the, they, these are orthogonal projectors, so not PK, but uh, the PiK obtained from PK are orthogonal projectors, and that uh, this is this uses heavily the the uh, the, the the result uh, the structures of the Arinking sheaf. Um, oh, sorry.
yeah, yeah, right, right, right. The image could be anything, but 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 now it's a uh, these are projectors, so the the image would be just a summon of it. So what? what? PK is enough, but you, you first prove things for PK. If you know PK is just a truncation functor, then, then you just plug in, right? Uh, then you get what PK means. Yeah. As long as you know PK is truncation functor. It's okay. what, what is the image? But you mean, but it's okay. You, repeat. So that, no, no. Yeah, so we already have a, uh, a decomposition of, we have already a motivic decomposition uh, into pi k, uh, into pi k, and we, we need to show, we basically need to show that the, the, the sum of, uh, so we need to show that pi k uh, picks out exactly the perverse cohomology. And the, by, but by looking at this formula, it suffices to, so this is deduced from this property. Oh, you mean, oh, oh, you mean you know the motivic decomposition and you want to use this to prove the full support. I do not know. But, but the, I mean, the full support theorem is, in some sense, it's easier because it's, it's just a topological, it's, it's, it's of, at the topological level. And the motivic decomposition is that you want to lift things to Eldrick cycles. At the, I think, um, yeah, I don't know. So you, what you said is that by looking at the shape of these cycles, whether you can say, okay, when the decomposition system is full support. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. It's, it seems to be pretty hard. Yeah, as I said, these, these cycles may not, I mean, these pi k, these cycles may, in general are not just the closure of the things at the boundary. So you really, uh, there are some very, even even the, the sheaf theoretic level, everything's of full support, meaning that everything's determined by the, the smooth locus, but at the cycle level, you really did something on the boundary. And uh, because, because the boundary has co-dimension two, but the, the, relations, the, the relations of this pi k happen in co-dimension g. So these are very small. So there can be many uh, things happened inside the boundary. And, uh, but these, but the, the, what, what do we do here to show that these cycles, no matter what they are, are essentially obtained from the Aaron King sheaf. But these are just some comma Macaulay sheaves that you, uh, that you know that that are extended to the boundary, but but you you don't you do not have a formula for that. So in particular, the the cycles may not have full support. But so yeah, I don't I, I don't I don't I don't know how to do the direction you suggested. Uh, but okay. Okay, so now we will move to the the hitching system, which. Uh, so now we have four steps. The first step is to use some formal properties of a derived uh, categories of coherent sheaf to produce a, a decomposition of diagonal. And, and then, then you, you get enough tautological. So the, the, the most technical part actually concerns step two. So uh, I didn't, uh, yeah, so it's here. So, so you want to show that the, the cycles you obtain from the derived category have the desired properties, meaning that you have to prove a bunch of tautological relations. Um, then after that, you, you, you combine with these, uh, these, these tricks together with the NGO support system, you show that these are the, the correct realization. Uh, these are the correct cycles. Uh, so as we see from, from, from the hitching system case, then every step will break down. It's starting from step one, because you don't, uh, the iron king sheep is not yet extended over the entire base, but also uh, the, the NGO full support system is wrong in this case. But before uh, moving there, let me just uh, make a quick comment. I, I didn't have much time to uh, talk about the, the multiplicative, uh, multiplicity, uh, multiplicative perspective of uh, this geometry. But let, let me just uh, say say a few words as a remark. Um, so, so also I mentioned so the the motivic the, the motivic perverse filtration. Is multiplicative. So you can think of this as some sort of you you uh, although you don't have the full multiplicativity as in the Bouvier decomposition, but from the multiplication by n perspective, the the weighted decomposition perspective, but you have half of it. 
And, and the, but to control the multiplicity, we have to go back to that. Uh, let me just uh, write, uh, mention this in um, here. So you have to go back to the, the property of the derived category. And you have this phi, and you have phi inverse. And you can think of the, the, the it's, not, it's not, not hard, to, hard to imagine that the, the car product is a, shift, is a cohomological reflection of the tensor product on the triangulated category. And if you do for a transform on the other side, again, when now there are singular fibers, but there is still a convolution product. But now this convolution product is no longer given by the, 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 the group structure of the abelian scheme, but now this is, this is induced by a kernel K. So, so there is a there is a kernel which is a is a is an object on the, the relative triple product, and uh, which induces a form of transform from two copies of J bar to the third. So you have one object, you have two objects on on the DB co of J bar. You pull them back, tensor with this one, and push forward to the third factor. So, um, and, and and that this operation actually is compatible with. Uh, under for a transform, this is com compatible with uh, uh, um, the tensor product on the other side. And then by running the entire process carefully, uh, descending these uh, cat derived category structures to algebraic cycles and further to cohomology, when obtain, uh, so, so then we see that the multiplicity, the creativity is a, consequence of, again, you turn everything into a support property, which is the support of this K is greater than, uh, has co-dimension uh, G. So to, to remind you what this K really looks like in the smooth case, in the smooth locus. So the, the K is the graph, is the structure shift of the, the, the graph of the addition. So you have, you have uh, three copies and uh, you consider the locus where A plus B is equal to C and that the K is nothing but just this structure shift. So of course you have A and B are free and then then C is determined by A and B so it's co-dimension G condition. And uh, what you really want is that, uh, after extending to the boundary, this K is also has code mention G. It's far from being that. Yeah, so, so the K is expressed in terms of uh, the uh, Poncari, uh, this P. This K is, there's there expression of K in terms of P, but the, the P is already very complicated in the boundary. It's, it's no longer a light bound and so on. But, but finally, the, the upshot is that the, all the things you want to control, if, if you want to control the perverse filtration, the all the things you want to control is, uh, and is, is a code measure. So you allow to have some correction terms uh, in the higher degrees. And then you run the entire argument and then you convince yourself that, so you have some correction terms, you have some correction terms in this FI, this for a vanishing here, and also you have some correction of, Okay, and they make sure that all the corrections are in some sense in the same direction. They will they will not cancel each other. So so then uh, this is the the idea. So in particular, um, as a as a uh, consequence. This proves the, the theorem too. So, uh, well, this is uh, this is uh, proved by Oblonkov and the Yun. For uh, for uh, the homogeneous singularity, and uh, this is in general. 
So which is the so for any C uh, integral uh, projective uh, and with planar singularities, local the planar, the the compatible Jacobian, the cohomology um, admits actually. So this is a single variety which admits a perverse filtration. So, so the definition of this is to you smooth this curve, putting this in a family, and then do the decomposition theorem, and then applying the perverse truncation functor there and restrict back to that fiber. So, so, uh, so this is this is not big. This is compatible with uh, Kappa. So Alexi and Zhiwei, the they used uh, the, in this case they realized so this JC bar is some uh, this some um, homogeneous affine Springer fiber and uh, they used the, the action of double affine hack algebra to prove this and uh, but uh, here the, the proof is very different it uses the the Fourier transform and the convolution and finally reduced to an estimate of the dimension bond so there are a lot of story concerning the structure of these ones first. Uh, well, maybe starting with, uh, um, even now there are many conjectures concerning the cohomology of the compatible Jacobian. Maybe one of the, the famous ones is the, the purity of this when the C has been a branch singularity, which is a conjecture by uh, Kotwitz, uh, Gorinsky, and McPherson. And I don't think this is now yet. And also this, uh, this perverse filtration and the, the dimension of the perverse filtration on this is a categorification of uh, the, the part of the Rosansky Havana homology when uh, so for the, the link associated with the singularities. And this is also part of the, uh, um, this is also part of uh, the, the, con the conjecture by uh, Blonkov, Shinde, and uh, Rasmussen. And Shinde has a proposal say, uh, say, suggesting that the perverse filtration of this, this, there should be a local P equals W which match the, the perverse filtration on this kind of compatible Jacobian with the weight filtration with some, some sort of braid varieties. And uh, this theorem can be thought of as a, a similar test of that. So if, if this P is compatible with some weight Hodge theoretic filtration, then um, they, uh, they should certainly be multiplicative under hypothesis. Okay, so now uh, this is the, this so far we have been, uh, How many times? Oh, this 17 minutes. Now I'll move to the hitching vibration. So we consider a, a, a Riemann surface of a genus at least two and, and rank and the degree. Um, so I, considering Yonghong's question the first day, I, I, from now I'll always assume the Copan condition. But yeah, so, so uh, yeah, we can talk afterwards uh, what have, what's are the uh, unknown things when without this condition. That's what we say. So then, I will use the M to denote the hitching vibration. I call this H. So M is uh, the modular space of pairs. So E is uh, the vector bundle of uh, rank N degree D. And the theta is a Higgs field, which is a amorphism between, you can think of this as an amorphism, but twisted globally by the canonical bundle. And the, the Hitching, uh, and the, the stability condition is the slope stability condition. You want every sub Higgs bundle to have a smaller slope. So, so, so the Hitching vibration is basically calculating the characteristic polynomial of um, this Higgs field. Um, more precisely, it's just, you, you record the, the trace, the trace of wedge two and uh, so on until the determinant. So then you can write this as a, so the hitching base is just the parameter space of all these coefficients. Uh, 
from one to n. So the geometric way, at least when I was first, when I first saw it, the geometric way we were thinking about it is that, is that um, so since the Higgs field is an endomorphism, is n by n matrix, so um, for every point on so point wise, this is just what we do is just record n points, which are the eigenvalues, and then but they they move along this curve, so it just sweep out something called spectral curves. And then this is the, the spectral curve description I gave yesterday. And in particular, when um, this is the Hitching base, so there is a Sarisky open locus where all the spectral curves are smooth. And, and then you can enlarge it. You, you consider the locus of integral locus. And this is also people call this elliptic locus. Uh, from the perspective of the Langlands program. And then the, the fibers are nasty outside here. So for example, the, the most singular fiber is the, the global neopotent cone, which corresponds to zero of this group, whose fiber actually contain the model of stable vector bundle as a irreducible component with some multiplicity and some other components. Okay, so after, so, so far we have discussed the, the, how to deal with the Jacobians and the uh, competitive Jacobians. And uh, finally, we hope to find the projectors or more precisely the motifs which govern everything over the, the entire base B. And, and so this is a, so recall that for, um, for the Jacobians or abelian varieties, there are two ways to do it. One is doing multiplication by N and uh, um, so I mean, to get the decomposition, one is to use the multiplication by n, the other is to use the, this quadratic term in terms of the Fourier transform of the line bundle. Um, and when there, when there are compatible Jacobians, then uh, we still have, the, then the new input is the Arinkin sheaf. The Arinkin uh, managed to extend the, the derived auto equivalence to uh, the, these singular fibers um, but now if you want to deal with everything, um, so from here to here, it's the extension that I'm ranking sheaf, but from here to here to here, it's a, as I was discussing last 15 minutes, it will be a completely different technique uh, uh, using uh, Springer theory. So, so maybe let me just, so the, the two, the, the four steps we discussed, the, the first step is to use the derived equivalence to cook up the decomposition of diagonal. And the, the step two is to construct relations, and the step three is to get projectors. And so all these three steps, they fail. They are not available. They are not available for the entire H. So the issue is that mainly that the Arinkin sheaf is not constructed yet. Uh, over B. Okay, but as a as a, a shadow of the the, uh, the cl or classical limit of the the geometric Langlands correspondence, then and the people still at least conjecturally, yes. So the, the conjecturally, the Arinkin sheaf should be there should be extension of the uh, Arinkin sheaf to the entire Hitching base, but this part is, to the best of my knowledge, is, is not available yet. But the step four is that after, after you write down the projector, you need to uh, show that you, you, so the step four in the previous case is use the NGO support theorem. Or NGO, um, NGO's full support theorem. And the, the issue is more serious here. So, so if you consider the entire hitching base, then uh, so for steps one, and one, two, three, these cycles, I mean, there may be extended, but the step four is just wrong. 
hơn so uh, so let me see uh, so, so th this is a uh, the theorem of the catado Carlos Migorini. And also there's recent work by uh, Maori Migorini. Which shows that, um, so it some sense the decomposition theorem for the entire Hitching system can be as complicated as possible. More precisely, if you consider the locus of reduced spectral curve, so, so the B can be sort of a parameter, uh, the, parameter, uh, the parameter space of the all spectral curves. But if you just, instead of considering the integral, you consider a little larger place, you consider the not necessarily integral curves, but the reduced uh, spectral curves. This is, a, this is a much larger open subset of uh, elliptic locus. Um, then they show that every levy meaning that every, you have, every time you have a partition of the rank n, so then the, then the generic point of the locus that you can have the, the, the shape of, the, the shape of the spectral curves can be broken into several parts and every levy will contribute, will contribute as a, every, every levy contributes as a support. Meaning that there are many, many smaller supports than the, the supports that are contributed by uh, uh, the, the, the entire B. So think bad things already happened uh, and reduced, uh, the B reduced, but, um, but well, you know, the, the worst thing is that if you go beyond B reduced, uh, not much is understood. Almost not, not much is understood by me. Uh, but well, this is to the best of my knowledge. Uh, for the no, for the rank two case, uh, it's okay because the so if, if you consider PGL, if you consider PGL model Jacobian factor, then this is the, essentially it's only one point, and I think Hanlos, Jürgen Hanlos proved that this point cannot be a support, which is the intersection form of which which is equivalent to the non degeneracy of the intersection form of the uh, middle cohomology of Higgs models. Uh, but when the rank starts to be three, then this, this, this subset is bigger, bigger and bigger. Then. Okay, so, uh, to deal with this case, the, um, the, the new idea is to, um, to use Springer theory, and this combines the, uh, the ideas to use Springer theory. As Michael mentioned yesterday, so when people study Higgs models, the only, the, always the, the strategy is to try to avoid talking about the most singular fibers, uh, uh, try as hard as possible to avoid this. And, uh, and, and, uh, it's, well, and, and this is one, one, of the ways to, one of the ways to, to avoid uh, doing that. Uh, so this actually combines the, uh, the, the Springer uh, interpretation of the parabolic Higgs models by uh, Mosca, uh, Ginsberg, uh, and, and Provkin, uh, in, in their work in, uh, in, in the study of uh, the Katz conjecture for um, counting intercomposable objects, and also the, the cohomological argument was used in, in Hausel Mallet. I mean, that's different. Okay, so now I need a little more space to uh, to draw the, the diagram. Uh, 
to, to, to describe the, the relative modular spaces. So the idea is to reduce the. So we start with M, which is the model of Higgs bundles in theta, where theta is a Higgs field. And the first step we do is that we, uh, we add a fake puncture. I'll explain what's the meaning of that. So add a fake puncture. By this, I mean, we consider the modular space of Higgs pairs together with a complete flag. So I need to make some choice. We choose a point T on the rewrite surface. So we considered, so this is a Higgs field with a complete flag at the point P, as, as in the parabolic structure. Uh, so here, let me write it in, the, in some sense a confusing way, but I will explain what's the reason I do this. So the theta is a meromorphic Higgs bundle, but actually it's holomorphic, meaning that the residue of this theta is just zero. So uh, there's a stupid reason I, I, I write this. Uh, because then this space naturally embeds into uh, a, a real parabolic space. So here, because, because of this condition, this is a fake puncture. And, and in particular, this is a, you have the well-defined morphism forgetting just the complete flag. And every, fi every fiber is a, is a flag variety, is isomorphic to flag variety on the choice, all the choices of the flag. Um, Okay, then you, you take the embedding into the, the parabolic space. These are, um, maybe I, I just read here. So this is E, theta, F. So here that the residue is just zero. Um, but here you require the, the residue to be neopotent. More precisely, this means that, the, so this, the residue preserves the, the flag in a stronger sense. The maps the i's piece to the i plus one piece, so 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 that so so the, the, if you use a matrix to denote it, so it's upper triangular, strict upper triangular, of all zeros in the diagonal and zero here, something complicated. Here. So here this is this matrix is zero, and here this matrix is upper strict upper triangular, and this space. Can be deformed. Um, you can just deform this um, eigenvalue to a generic position. So, so here, well, let, let me finish this in two, two minutes. I, I need a lot, a little larger. So, so this is. So this is the same condition here, but the matrix, instead of strict upper triangular, you, you, you allow the residue to be distinct and a general. So this is, by this, the geometric picture is that if you, over this P, you fix this eigenvalue to be uh, generic enough so then this for, by the residue theorem, then this force you that every spectral curve passing through these points would be integral. So in particular, this is a wild group. Uh, so if you, if you quotient out by the wild group, on the choice, the permutation of this n distinct eigenvalue, this goes back to a competitive Jacobian vibration with some twisted degree. Okay, so let me just let me finish this in last sentence by just writing you down uh, what the projectors uh, the complete path. So this is Q. So you start with some correspondence. You start with some correspondence z over uh, j c bar, and uh, this is constructed by the theorem one. And uh, more precisely, a twisted version. Uh, some 
degree twisted version of theorem one, and there you there you pull it back. It gives you something here, and there you specialize, and uh, this gives you some correspondence for m zero par. And finally, you, you do this correspondence, you conjugate with this correspondence. So you have a cycle here, which is a relative product here, and you, you just conjugate uh, this guy. And uh, you conjugate this, meaning that, so once you have a correspondence here, you cook up a correspondence by first composing with this one, uh, acting on this, uh, act on by this, cycle here and then compose it back. So these are the cycles that finally, uh, these are the cycles which are finally the projectors. But but the, the, but the way how it is, by how we write it, there's no guarantee because you, you pass through the correspondence, there's no guarantee that all the relations, all the relations satisfied by these cycles will be preserved by this one. And there is an argument which is about understanding these correspondences using Springer theory. But I, I think I'm out of time, so I just stop here and we can talk afterwards. Thanks. Yeah, so, okay, so, so but here, if you, if you want to, the hardest thing here is to prove the relations between this pi k. Uh, the, the two things, one is to prove that pi k has the correct homologization. Uh, so these are the step four. Uh, this is a completely different argument, uh, but for another, another part is to prove that this, uh, this pi k are orthogonal projectors. But then if you write two different pi k, then you see that you have to, so you know the relations between these things in bracket. And you want to, after conjugating what you want that they satisfy the same relations. But usually this is very wrong. So here, but you see that the, that the issue is that you want to understand the self, uh, the self correspondence is given by, so this one composed with this one. So this kind of correspondence. And then, uh, so this correspondence actually can be calculated by Springer theory because, so, if you if you view this Hitching model of spaces and the mapping space to the classical Lie algebra, then this correspondence is nothing. So so if you have this uh, neop neopotent cone cross neopotent cone over, this is the Springer resolution of the neopotent cone, and this correspondence, the local model for this correspondence is just the, the flag variety cross the flag variety. So so inside here, where uh, where this is the T star of the flag variety. So, but the, the Springer theory tells you this is actually given by a specialization of the, the longest length while element from the generic fiber. And using this and the, and the plug into uh, this Hitch, all the Hitching model space and going through this diagram. So you, you get that this correspondence commute with all the correspondences, the pullback from the base of this SN portion. And uh, this, is, this is how you solve the relation part. Well, so this really is just classical Schrodinger theory. Yep. Um. For this part of an argument, it don't so as I, so the only so that that part is not needed. So, so you can see that, I mean this so the Hitching model of space. So you can think that if, if you so this diagram is essentially the modification at the point P. So the Hitching model of space uh, M uh, I mean, for this all the parabolic spaces like the parabolic space, you have an evaluation map at the point P, which goes to essentially the Lie algebra uh, up to conjugation. And then every step here has an interpretation here. And, and then you can show that all this evaluation morphism after restricting the stable locus are smooth. And then 
so for, for calculating the correspondence on this more global spaces, uh, it suffice to finally you just reduce to a calculation on this Lie algebra. But it's the same spirit, but you don't the precise statement there is not needed. It's hidden here. So um, yeah, so you you mean you you take this one, and and this is the, this gives you the family of. Yeah, this, this version is easier than this. You first get here. So yeah, yeah, that's right. You first get things here. And then, but this is already the first place where the full support theorem is maybe wrong. So I mean, for, for parabolic exponent, the, the full support theorem is already wrong. But uh, the, we have to keep track of all the decomposition. So, so the option is that you study the decomposition theorem here as a specialization of the decomposition theorem. And where this one has full support. Um, so one of the issue is that uh, this all, so this kind of this is the evaluation map at the at the, at the puncture and the dysmorphism without the if you go to the semi strict semi stable locus dysmorphisms are not smooth and uh, then okay yeah so if everything's stable there I think the argument works. But the issue is that when there are strict semi stable, then there, there will be issues when tracing this diagram. That space will always be singular. Yeah, so here maybe I, uh, the better way I just. <laughs> I would remove this. Yes. That is only the case in the yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah.